Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this lesson, I want to spend a bit more time talking about some smaller syntax elements of the C Sharp language that you need to master to understand how a properly formed line of code is constructed in C Sharp. And in one of the previous lessons, almost like the first lesson, I said something to the effect that just like you use a period or question mark or exclamation mark at the end of a sentence in English to complete a thought, you also use a semicolon at the end of a line of code in C sharp to, to uh, denote a complete thought. And kind of to extend that analogy a little bit, I may have briefly referred to C sharp syntax as having nouns and verbs. Uh, so I want to elaborate on, on these sorts of things and clarify what I mean by that in this lesson. So I'm going to talk about the basic building blocks and I guess you could say parsing the parts of speech in C Sharp. So let's start off at the beginning. Statements are what you call complete thoughts in C Sharp, typically one line of code. A statement is made up of one or more expressions. And expressions are made up of one or more operators and operands. So we've seen a number of statements and expressions and operators and operands already, whether you realized it or not. Uh, so as we're taking a look at some of the previous work that we've done here, I've got the variables project from a previous lesson opened up. And so, for example, uh, you can see that essentially each line of co code is a statement. Each of them are made up of one or more expressions. So here, for example, is an example expression. This happens to be a variable declaration statement made up of a operator, which in this case is a keyword int for the, uh, for the data type integer, and then an operand, in this case, a variable name. Uh, we also use another operator, the semicolon, for the end of the, uh, the line of code. Uh, another example would be here where we have a, uh, an assignment where we're actually calling a method. So here is an operand. It is the name of a class. And we're using the open, close parentheses. Remember, these are operators. This is the method invocation operator. Then we're using another operator here, the assignment operator, to assign this expression, the value of this expression, to another operand, the name of a variable that we created. All right. So if we were to look through the code, we could continue to kind of parse out and understand what makes up operands, operators, expressions, and then entire code statements. Now, operands are, are similar to nouns. They are things like objects and classes and variables and even literal values. These are the subject, I guess you could say, of your statement of code. And they're pretty easy to remember because typically you give them names, you define the values yourself, and so on. Now, operators are similar to verbs. They are things like the addition operator or the string concatenation operator. These are things that act on the operands in order to perform some action. And typically, you're going to use the built-in operators, although you could create your own operators, kind of a little bit of an advanced topic. But uh, there are actually quite a few built-in operators, and you're going to need to memorize many of them. That's how you come to express yourself in C Sharp. Now, fortunately, as you start out, you probably only need to know a handful uh, to, to be productive. And so what I want to do in this lesson is uh, to focus on a few that I think you're going to use probably 90% of the time as you begin learning. And you can obviously add to that list as we, uh, as we continue. So um, I'm going to actually present these in a rapid fire fashion. I've created a very nonsensical application. You can open this up, download it from wherever you're currently watching this video or wherever you originally downloaded it from. I called this project Operators Expression Statements. And 
the application itself does absolutely nothing meaningful at all, okay? Um, and so all it really does is kind of show you some examples of the various um, operators and expressions that you'll come across whenever you're uh, whenever you're working in C sharp. All right, so at the very outset here, you can see that I have a variable declaration. We talked about this already. I did something a little bit different this time where I've declared several variables all up front as integers. So X, Y, A, and B are all defined as integers. Just wanted to show you something a little bit different there. Uh, by separating them with commas, uh, it's an easy way to just um, to declare several variables of the same type all on one line of code. Now, I typically don't recommend this, but you might see this around uh, in use in books and on the internet. All right, so next up, assignment operator. We've already seen uh, the equal sign at work in that capacity. Uh, note here in line number 22 and following that there are actually many different mathematical operators. We're only looking at the most basic ones, but there are also some advanced ones as well. But here we have addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. And as I demonstrate here, you can use parentheses to actually change the order of operations. So these are not, in this particular situation, the parenthesis is not a method invocation operator. It's actually a how you would typically use it in an algebraic or mathematical sense. You would use it in order to specify the order of operations. So perform this expression first, then this expression, and then take the result of those two and multiply them together in that third expression and then assign them to the value of x. Okay. And then there are uh, there are operators that are used to evaluate. Uh, we've already talked about the equality operator where we're using two equal sign next to each other to make sure that these two items are in fact equal. Here again, we're using parentheses and yet a different capacity to define the boundaries of our expression that will either equate to true or false. So x equals y is either true or false. Uh, we can use greater than, we can use the less than operator, uh, we can use greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All of these, again, should produce a true or false result. Uh, there are also two conditional operators uh, that can be used to expand or enhance an evaluation. And they can be combined together multiple times, as I say here in the comments. So I could ensure that both x is greater than y is true and a is greater than b is true by using the logical and operator. There's also an or operator to say either x has to be greater than y or a has to be greater than b in order for this outermost expression to be true. All right, so here's the logical or two pipe characters next to each other. All right. So, um, and then I guess we've already talked about that inline conditional operator where we have some item that's being evaluated and then if it's true, then we'll take the first value and if it's false, then we'll take the second value. And in this case, we're assigning either car or boat into this message variables value. And then also wanted to talk about member access and method invocation. We're gonna talk about object-oriented programming uh, quite a bit uh, later on in this series of lessons, but we've already said how the console was a class and classes are containers, uh, for a lack of a more robust definition, for methods and the way that you access a member method of a class or an object is by using the dot or the period. That is the member accessor operator. Furthermore, we talked about the method invocation operator here. We are invoking a method called right line by using the opening and closing uh, parentheses. And in this particular case, we're passing in an input parameter. Again, we want to hold off and talk about input parameters and methods a little bit later. But as you can see, here's a number of different operators, and these are just what I would call a very baseline set. You need to memorize these uh, so that you can express the most basic of C-sharp commands 
and understand exactly what it is that you're trying to do. It's not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, you will probably need these about 90, 95% of the time. And then you can expand your vocabulary of other operators and keywords over time. So in each of these cases that we just looked at, an expression is made up of a combination of operands, which are things like the literal strings and variables and objects like the console class itself, and operators. Uh, so things like the addition operator, string concatenation operator, equality assignment operators, and so on. And you use expressions then to form complete thoughts, statements in C Sharp, which are how the actions or the instructions of an application are expressed to the compiler and ultimately to the .NET runtime, which executes your application. All right. So why am I telling you all of this? Why go through this little um, English lesson, you know, parsing out the different parts of speech if you've ever had to take an English, English class? Well, it will help you to understand why this is not a valid statement in C Sharp. Uh, you can't just type X plus Y and then give it a end of line character and expect it to do anything. The C Sharp compiler will look at that and say, what are you trying to accomplish here? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? What do you want me to do with all this? So fortunately in situations like these, as you can see, Visual Studio can catch these sorts of syntactical mistakes uh, even before you attempt to run the application. And, um, you know, if we were to hover our mouse cursor over the visual, uh, the visual guidance here, the red squiggly line, you can see that the, the fundamental problem with this line of code is that only assignment, call, increment, decrement, and new object expressions can be used as a statement. So what's the problem here? Well, this is not a properly formed statement. We're not assigning, calling, incrementing, decrementing, or creating new object expressions. Uh, what? We're not formulating a complete thought, a good sentence. I mean, I could create an English sentence like this, the red ball, period. And you would say the red ball does what? Who has the red ball, okay? We can understand that just because you use words doesn't mean you're creating a complete thought or expression inside of the English language. Same thing is true with C Sharp. All right, that's all I'm trying to say here. So for beginners, understand that there's a proper syntax, just like there's a proper grammar in the English language. Understanding this is really a big step towards solving your own problems whenever you're phrasing C-sharp instructions that the C-sharp compiler will understand and accept and ultimately compile into code that will be run by the .NET framework. So here, let's recap what we talked about in this lesson. First of all, statements are complete instructions in C-sharp. They consist of expressions. And a statement is like a sentence in the English language, and expressions are uh, composed of things like nouns and verbs, in other words, operators and operands. The operands are things like nouns, they're the subject or what we want to do something with. And then there are the operators, which are more like the verbs. These will act on the nouns to perform some, some action. We said that operands are like uh, variables and classes, literal strings. These are things that we get to name ourselves. They, they give the meaning to our application, whereas operators are, for the most part, built into the language, and we have to memorize them. And so to start off, you might use something like what I've given you here in the form of a project for a cheat sheet. Uh, but I think you might just be able to, to walk your way through and rationalize your way through now that you understand that there's a proper way to format a line of code, you might say, okay, what do I need to do here? Uh, and you might be able to reason your way through the operands and the operators. I'm going to need uh, a variable to, to, con to contain some values. And so once I have created that variable in memory, now I'm going to need to assign it to something. Now, how am I going to get to that something? I'm going to need to take uh, another variable and this literal value, and I'm going to need to add them together with an operator, and hopefully you get the idea there, okay? Okay, so I hope that this was a useful exercise. I think it's useful for beginners to understand that there are syntax rules, and they're not so unlike what you're already familiar with. 
maybe they look a little bit different than your typical English sentence, but they still have to make sense. And they have to perform an action, they have to do something. And so when you see errors, sometimes it's because you type something incorrectly, and then it's sometimes it's, you may not be using the right forms of speech, in a sense, in order to express that complete thought in C-sharp. Okay, so let's pick it up in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.